can't seem to get this. It's stuck. Would you get it for me? Uh. Hi, Gary. Good morning, darling. Oh, it's so good to hear your voice. Oh, I miss you terribly. Thanks, Elwood. Okay. Uh, in case uh, you're wondering, I think uh, you've just decided to get even with me for all those trips that I've taken, and uh, you've succeeded. Don't be silly, honey. I miss you, too. But I gotta tell you, Matt, all-day conference I had with Julian Drake was probably the most exciting day I've had in my life ever. You mean to tell me you spent the whole day with him? Yeah, nonstop. But it was worth it. Well, then you two must have really gotten along well. Yeah, yeah, we really have. He's, he's a great guy. Knows everybody. And uh, as far as I can see, he knows everything about publishing books, too. Oh, well, that, that's fine. Are, are you all through now? No, no, we have another meeting set for today. You know, he is turning my book around, giving him more dimension and more sides than I never even thought of. I mean, it's terrific. Oh, well, well that's really nice. When, when, um, uh, when will you be coming home? Tonight? No, no, I am not. Uh, that's really what I called him out. Oh, Gary. No, well, honey, if the drink is throwing a party for him, he's going to introduce me to some very important people. There's also going to be an artist there that he wants me to meet, a guy that just might uh, be able to illustrate my book. Then, and he's definitely going to publish it. That's how it looks to me, with lots of pictures. But that's wonderful. Congratulations. Well, let's wait till it's been on the New York Times bestseller list for 10 weeks and sells to the movies. Then we can really celebrate. Sells to the movies? Diet book? Sure, why not? I'm already thinking about who I can get to play the calories. <laughs> it's so good to hear you up again. I just hope I don't have to wait ten weeks before you come home. No, 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 no. I'll be home just as soon as I can, honey. And uh, I'll call you later and let you know how it all went. All right. I love you. And I hope it all turns out exactly the way you want it. Uh, well, I love you too, babe. And, uh... Thank you. I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye. Anything wrong? Oh, every, everything went uh, wonderfully well. Well, you don't sound too happy about it. Oh, it's just that... Uh, Gary's going to be staying in New York tonight for a party. Oh. He didn't even ask me if I wanted to come down and join him. Well, he probably figured you were too tied up with your research. Maybe. I just get a feeling that he was so excited that he didn't even think of asking me. I'm, I'm being very foolish. Somebody got them started anyway. Did Dan find you when he came in this morning? Yes, thank you. I was in my office and I was kind of busy, so we didn't have much chance to talk. You two haven't had a fight or anything, have you? No, what makes you think that? I don't know. Whenever you're around Dan lately, you get really quiet and kind of self-conscious. Like last night. Your imagination's working overtime. I hope so. I have this secret fantasy about you and Dan getting married one of these days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't you think maybe we're a little old to get married? No, Jesse. What does age have to do with it? Quite a lot, I think. Who says you have to be Jack and Jill to fall in love? Well, that's a fairly pragmatic point of view. I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> May I help you? Oh, oh, no thanks. I, uh, I have an appointment at the clinic with, uh, with Dr. Leslie Weber. Oh. Thanks anyway. Excuse me. Excuse me, honey. Uh, of course. Aren't you Bobby Spencer? Yes. Well, 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 sure you are. Don't you remember me, Bobby? No, I'm afraid I don't. Uh, of course you do. I'm Polly Middleton. I used to live next door to your family on Elm Street. I was a real good friend of your mother. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't remember. But you must remember, why, I even helped you cut down a dress of your sister Pat's. 
It was too big for you. Why, I, as I recall, you, you were very disappointed about the whole thing, but I was very proud. I remember putting a little flower right on the waist to cover the stain that the cleaners couldn't get out. I'm really sorry, but I don't remember any of that. Oh. Well, if you don't, you don't. But I should remember. How long have you been a nurse? I'm only a student. I've, I've been in training for about a year now. That's terrific. That's really great. Last time I heard about you, you were uh, living down in Florida with your cousins. Say, by the way, do you ever see Pats and Luke? No, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't see any of them anymore. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> well, listen, I tell you what. I'll stop by here when I finish at the clinic, and we'll have some coffee together and really talk about old times on Elm Street. Well, thank you very much, Miss Middleton, but I just came from a coffee break, and I've got a full schedule of afternoon classes. Oh. Well, uh, listen, it's, uh... Nice running into you. I'll uh, see you around, Bobby. Come on, Flo. Why are you so upset about you? You're being friendly. Jesse, I've tried so hard to forget all of those awful times, and she comes waltzing in here. I don't need any reminders about that. Oh, come on. I, mean, I can understand your wife. you forget a difficult time, but you should be terribly proud of the way you've come through it. And don't you ever feel ashamed of your family or your that background. I know, I know. Well, I'm going to take a break. I'll be back in about ten minutes, okay? Sure. Hi, Bob. Hi, Scotty. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? Yeah, it's okay. I'll see you after my appointment with Dr. Taylor. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right, I'm with you. That old jealousy is starting the show again. You better watch it. It isn't jealousy. <laughs> well, it looked like it to me. I was just thinking about how easy it is for people have it. People who have everything handed to them from the time they grow up, like Laura. Why do you let that bother you so much? She never had to worry about where her next meal was coming from. She never had to wear hand me down clothes. You can bet on that. So what? So plenty. And with all of her fancy background and her fancy upbringing and two famous doctors for parents, she still ends up getting involved with a dirty old man and killing him in the bargain. You're weird, you know that? What's weird about it? It's true. Yeah, but you shouldn't let that eat away at you like that. I like you, Bobby, but when you envy somebody, you're a pain. Chris, don't make me laugh. I would hardly envy a murderess. If he gets sent away to reform school, she makes one wrong move. Why don't you stop pinning labels on her and try to think of her as somebody who made a mistake and was trying to live it down? And you could try being a little more charitable. Because I don't think people ever let you live down a mistake. There's always somebody around to remind you. And someday, little Laura Weber's going to learn that. <laughs> The nurse said that Dr. Taylor is still with the patient. You don't have to wait. No, no, that's all right. I want to. Hello, you two. Hello, Hello Doctor. Laura, it's nice to see you again. Thank you. Well, you know, Lee and I um, saw your mom and dad over at the Hardy's on Thanksgiving, but we were both so sorry that uh, you and Scotty didn't come along. Well, they said they had a very nice time. Yes, it was a lovely day. I, I hope I haven't kept you waiting, but my, my session with Dr. Taylor took a little longer than was scheduled today. Session? I didn't know that you were seeing Dr. Taylor professionally. Mm hmm Oh, I just started, but already I feel a lot better for it. I, I can't imagine anyone like you needing psychiatric help. Well, you see, you never know about those things. Well, I did discover that I had some problems that I really couldn't kind of deal with myself, so I've been going to Dr. Taylor for some help with them. Oh, I know you must be anxious to get in there, so uh, I'll see you later, Laura. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh. Sarah. Scotty, um, I, I want you to do something for me. Hi, Laura. Hey, I'm sorry I ran late. That's all right. Well, how was school today? Well, let's uh, sit down and get started, shall we? Try to make up for lost time. Before we start, have you heard anything from Mr. Higgins since I had that argument with Bobby Spencer in the book room? Yes, yes, he sent me a copy of the report he filed with Judge Stolman about it. 
of us already one strike against me. And they're not going to stop until they find grounds to send me away to reform school. Well, Laura, that's not true. You've got to stop thinking of reform school as a sword hanging over your head every minute. But how can I? It is. It is a real threat. Now, believe me, that's the last thing that anyone wants, including John Higgins and Judge Stallman. I wish I could believe that, Dr. Taylor. But I'm afraid I can't. Look, I'd like to come over and see you tonight if I can. So we can put our plan against little Laura Weber into action. I'll tell you, every time I see her smug little face around here, it bothers me more. And she'll be sent away to reform school. It's the last thing I ever do. All right, I'll see you then. Hey, um, I didn't hear you. How long have you been standing there? Not long, huh? Gail's expecting a special delivery letter, and I was wondering if it came yet. Oh, uh, I'll check. Nope, not here. I'll bring it down to her personally as soon as it comes in. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Scotty? I miss talking to you. Maybe we could just get together sometime and talk about things? Well, Bobby, I've been really busy with law school, and I've stepped up my classes, so uh, I don't have any free time. Yeah, I can understand that. I, um, I guess I've just made things worse between us because of that fight I had with Laura. No, no, that's not true. But I, I do think you two ought to avoid each other as much as possible because, I mean, you just don't understand each other and you're never going to get along. So, Bobby, maybe you just don't try, all right? Yeah, I guess it looks that way, doesn't it? Oh, well, hello, Scotty. Hello, Bobby. Hi, Mr. Baldwin. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you, dear. Lee, I'm glad I ran into you because there's a big favor that I want to ask you. Oh? What's that? I was wondering if I could borrow your car day after tomorrow to drive up to the lake and have an early dinner. I'll have it back to you before 9.30. Day after tomorrow? Yeah. I don't think that poses any big problem. Glad to let you have it. Oh, good. I'll take it real easy with it, too, okay? Okay. Where are you going for dinner? To the lodge. Brian was up there a couple of nights ago with some friends. He said it was really good. Had a lot of fireplaces and, you know, a lot of atmosphere up there. Sounds very romantic to me. Well, yeah, they got good food there, too. Well, I'm sure you have a good time. Listen, is Gail in her office now? Yeah, yeah, she is. I have a meeting with Steve, but uh, I think I'll go see her first. Listen, you call me and we'll arrange for you to pick up the keys, all right? Okay. I appreciate that. Thanks yeah, a lot, Dad. Bye, Mr. Baldwin. Scotty. What? Is it true that Gail is named Dr. Taylor professionally now? Who told you that? Well, I saw her name on a patient's list. I couldn't believe my eyes. Yeah, well, she is, and I admire her for it. Well, so do I, but I'm surprised. I always thought she was so well-adjusted, you know? She is, Bobby. I'll see you. 